What is going on everybody? Today I wanted to talk about a very special technique, a very interesting technique that's very near and dear to my heart, but I thought this one was interesting because a lot of people seem to struggle with this and I get a lot of comments about this and people just tend to not be very good at this technique for whatever reason. Turns out they're not alone. Turns out there's a few people, even some okay players, decent players, maybe some uh, some Capcom Cup champions right there. You know, you can see Idom here. Uh, claiming his $250,000 prize from Ono. And he has very vocally claimed that this technique is something that he struggles with. He's even gone, Brian, how can you do such amazing things with this technique? And I go, Idom, you're the Capcom Cup champion. You tell me. What I am, of course, talking about is charge moves. It's so simple to me because I play charge characters. But yes, the Capcom Cup champion literally cannot do charge moves or play charge characters. He thinks basic charge combos are extremely difficult. So I figured we'd spend today talking about charge moves and why they're actually, actually easier in a lot of ways than having other moves. Let's go ahead and hop on over to our favorite mode, of course, training mode. And let's just talk about what a charge move is. So this is Oro. He has a mix of non-charge and charge moves. So a non-charge move would be your standard special move. Like his his Tatsu here, his, it's a quarter circle motion backwards, down, down, back, back, plus a kick button. And you can move around. And anytime you're on the ground or you're not already committed to another move, you can of course do this move, walk up, special cancel and do the move. However, he has a few other moves which are charge. He has this move. And this move is a charge move, meaning I need to hold down or down back. I need to keep some kind of down direction, down forward even if you're so bold as to do so. But you hold down and then you press up and a button and it'll give you this move. Now that means, of course, I cannot be walking around and then do this move. It, it does not work. It forces you to kind of give up your mobility in order to have access to this move. The other move that Oro has like this is his fireball. Just like Guile, Oro has a charged fireball, but if you know anything about Guile, you know that that fireball is pretty good, even though it's a charge move. You might be thinking here like, okay, so he has charged moves, so what? What is the problem with that? Well, let's go through a few basic examples of why this is kind of a drawback. Say you're just playing the footsies games, you're trying to walk around, you're trying to walk around and play the footsies game, and he jumps at you. You can't do your DP. You literally cannot do your DP in this situation. So if he jumps, especially at an angle where it's gonna cross you up, you don't have access to it. Now, if I was holding down back the whole time, I would have access to this. But even then, you know, you're forced to sit there and, and not move for a while. And uh, only then can you actually use this move. So if I'm playing footsies, trying to actually adjust my spacing and control the ground, I lose access to this move. Something that I might want at a critical moment when they jump. So I kind of have to predict ahead of time when they might jump and then start holding down back or down of some sort to have access to the move. The other issue is like fireball battles, right? So Akuma is playing the fireball game. You know, he has pretty good fireballs. If I'm trying to keep up with this, I have to hold down back. And Oro definitely can keep up, but I can't move forward and do that. Anytime I move forward, I fall behind in the fireball battle because I don't have access to my fireball for another second or so. So it limits how often you can use these moves, but usually, usually that's for a good reason. So uh, Oro's Fireball, he has a slow version and a fast version. They're very strong fireballs actually. And he also has an up fireball, but he also has this fireball. So imagine if Oro wasn't limited by charge when he could do these fireballs and I could walk up behind this fireball and, and throw another red one behind it. You know what I mean? Or I can walk forward and then do the up fireball or walk at you while doing this or walk up and do low forward into Hadouken. The, the reason charge moves exist is usually to limit how you use it because the moves are better in other ways. And look at this fireball. This thing, if you don't know, it tracks all over the screen. Imagine if this was not a charge move and he could just walk up and throw that move whenever. And, and then this thing is just a heat seeking ballistic missile which tracks you everywhere on the screen. Same idea with these uppercut moves, like they have some air invincibility. If you can just walk up and do this whenever, it might actually be a little bit too strong, you know? So you can see the design implementation with charge moves. And if, you know, the classic example is just Guile. You look at Guile, he has the best fireball in the game and one of the best anti-airs in the game with Sonic Boom and his flash kick. Those are both charge moves. Imagine Guile without charge. In fact, we don't have to imagine it because uh, if you ever seen any high level footage of Street Fighter 4 in the 3DS, yes, there was Street Fighter 4 3DS. He did not have charge in that version of the game. 
So you know we're getting some old school high level tech when it's 480p blurry hand cam footage. But let's see what this has to show us. If you don't understand what's happening here, he's doing combos that are in no way supposed to be possible. He's doing stuff that is not possible at all in the normal Street Fighter 4 version of the game because in the 3DS version, you didn't have charge moves. You can you could just do your special moves by tapping and selecting the move on the touch screen. Normally, when you do a fireball, you have to do forward and punch, which means you lose your down charge, so you cannot do your flash kick. But 3DS Kyle doesn't care. Flash kick, FADC, should be impossible backwards, straight into a charge ultra which this move you're also not supposed to have access to without charge. So he does three charge moves in a row and gets this really high damage combo from a situation that shouldn't be possible and it should never be possible. And there's a reason they do that because Giles is owner, you know, he's his owner. He can just walk around and press buttons into Sonic Boom and do flash kicks on demand no matter what. He is undoubtedly the top tier in Street Fighter 4 3DS edition, the very competitive uh, game that that was he was just absolutely broken unleashed so that's why we have charge restrictions on certain moves to kind of control their play style however what if i were to tell you that actually having a charge move is a benefit hmm? having a charge move actually is a plus a lot of people talked about oro saying oh i would play oro if he wasn't charge oh it's so hard to play charge characters uh, i feel like charge is holding him back but I don't think so at all. Let me show you a few examples of how having a charge move can actually be a benefit. Here I have Dalsim doing EX Fireball to Ensnare Teleport, doing a forward or a back one. So I kind of have him doing either one. Um, you don't know which one it's gonna be. Let me try to show how I would try to punish this with super. If I'm doing super punish, cool, okay. I got the super punish that time. All right, he went in front, got the super punish. That's cool, good thing that's not charge. Oh wait, what happened there? When he goes behind me, I lose the proper directionality with my input. I don't know what side he's gonna be on, and therefore I don't know if I should do the quarter circles for the super to the left or to the right. Whenever you have a motion, it's dependent on you know the reference to the character, but a down up charge is not relative to the opponent. So you might be seeing where I'm going with this. I do not have to think about what side the opponent's on. The same input will give me the DP no matter if he goes to the left side or if he goes to the right. So this is a huge plus to having flash kick type moves like, you know, the down up charge moves. It's a huge advantage. So regular traditional motion moves, they don't have that advantage. In fact, they're disadvantaged in that way where you have to know where the opponent is to be able to do them. So that can actually mess you up in a lot of ways. So another benefit that the charge moves have. If you see the sequence, it's, this is not the tightest drill sequence, but this can be kind of annoying when fighting Dalsim. Like sometimes you can get interrupted with you go for normal anti-airs or the drill will come very fast and very shallow. If you're trying to do a DP motion, it takes a lot of time relatively to get this move to come out. So comparatively, if this wasn't a charge move, you would assume it would be something like a Dragon Punch input, which is sure you can you know, the standard DP input, forward, down, down, forward. To do this motion, you have to have so many separate inputs involved. Forward, down, down, forward, punch. And you have to do them in succession. And during that time, you are literally not able to block. You're holding forward or down, forward, or down. At no point do you hit back. If you're doing a flash kick or a flash punch like Oro, I'm holding down back. The only input I need to do is go from down back to up back and punch. It's essentially one input. It's one smooth motion. I don't have to move my wrist in multiple different directions, then press punch. I literally just slide it up and press the button. It's so much faster. And there's only a tiny, tiny, like one frame where I'm holding back before I get the anti-air. So worst comes to worst, you block, um, or you're a little bit too slow to get your uppercut out and it gets stuffed. But you know, you're blocking during this, it's actually safer. And it's so fast. So what I'm getting at is it's actually much easier to react in the clutch in these kind of situations with a flash punch move. It's actually way easier. This is a benefit of this move being charged. You know, another example of this would be Balrog Super. Balrog, his super in Street Fighter 4 was a charge move. And in Street Fighter 5, they turned into a motion. Whereas Guile's super is still 
a charge move. We just saw that recently with Haguchi and his CPT run. Haguchi had that whole highlight reel of him doing all the, the reaction supers. He's using Guile as a charge character and he's hey, using this at the highest level to react and whip punish with man, super. Whole compilation of it here. Oh, yep, there he goes. I was uh -huh, gonna say. Uh -huh. Oh boy. Oh, put that away. We see Haguchi be ready with that before, and he takes the round off of it. It goes on for a whole minute of him doing this to Sako every time she whiffs like a certain normal at a certain range. He's ready with the charge, so it does require him to be preemptively prepared for it. But then he just inputs the motion. The motion for Guile Super is back charge forward back forward i would argue that that motion is much easier to do on reaction than a double quarter circle forward raw because just like with the the flash punch or the flash kick you are naturally when you're playing a charge character you are naturally going to be in the back position so when you're in this position all you have to do is do forward back forward punch you can just wiggle the stick really quick and get the super motion. However, to go from this position to do a double quarter circle forward, there's a lot more room for error and a lot more motion involved. I'm here holding back in a defensive position. Now I have to swing to down, down, forward, go back to neutral, down, down, forward. But from here, from back, I can just do one, two, three. I'm already holding charge, one, two, three. So yes, you do have a caveat of needing to have charge, but actually, if you have the charge, you have access to your moves much faster. And like I mentioned, I used to play Street Fighter 4 Balrog. I used to react super and react ultra to so many more things so much more easily than with Street Fighter 4, uh, 5 Rog having a motion super. They have their pros and cons here. And so in many ways, I think having charge moves is a plus. There's also more to it because they lock behind a lot of damage and tools and ability behind mastering charge. If you can learn to master charge better than IDOM, you get access to a lot of stuff that is not immediately on the table. Uh, for example, Yuri and headbutt loops. Let's take a look at the sequence here. So when he lands the counter hit, he cancels standing medium punch into a headbutt and then standing jab into a headbutt as well. And then he does his other setup. Standing medium punch, standing jab, stand jab again. All into headbutts. If you think about it, it might not make immediate sense how he's even able to do that because there's lots of tricks with charge. There's lots of advanced techniques with charge. So I'll quickly show kind of how that works. So you're in headbutt, you know, it's a down up charge move. So you might be like, how do I cancel a standing move into it? So if I just walk around to try to do a standing move and then do headbutt, if I don't do it with the proper timing, you're obviously not going to get it. It's pretty easy to do a standing move to a forward charge move because I'm holding charge, back charge the whole time, but you lose your down charge when you do a standing move. So there's basically tricks to keep your charge for a small amount of time while you are doing a standing normal. So you can see here I'm holding down back, I have charge. I let go of the stick and then press standing medium punch, then up plus punch. So for a short amount of time, even though I'm in neutral, I lost my charge. You you keep your charge even once you let go for a few frames. It has some leniency. Um, and you can see that with certain other charge moves, like you can walk a few frames before you do things like EX headbutt, for example. You're, you definitely don't have your down charge as you're walking up, but the game keeps your charge for a short amount of time so you can do stylish stuff. So this is obviously not a beginner technique to do. It's, it's much easier to just cancel from a charge normal into an up charge move. But you can see how like there's a lot of potential opportunity with, with this sort of technique. So they purposely make harder combos and more advanced combos reserved for people who dedicate themselves to the character if you can master the charge shenanigans. So that's what we see here with those Yuri and headbutt loops in action. Um, you get certain setups and when it all lines up and you master charge, you can do these kind of combos, which are not possible if you don't know about how to manage your charge. Like this is not a normal sequence to land, that is for sure. So yeah, there's a, definitely a lot of drawbacks to charge moves. You can't just match DP in any block string and they might be a little bit complex, but if you can be a little bit more, you know, big brain and be, be a little bit better than this guy, this Capcom Cup champion who can't even use charge characters. If you can master charge, you can see that they can unlock a whole new world of techniques, combo routes, and 
just really awesome sequences for characters if you're willing to put the work in. So it's not always a drawback sometimes, it's actually an advantage. There's definitely pluses and minuses with charge. So don't let a charge character or a character being charged dissuade you from trying them out. It might be awkward at first, but once you get the hang of it, you definitely have a lot of advantages and a lot of strengths with using charge characters. And a lot of them are actually, you know, they're pretty top tier in a lot of games. That's all I got for this video. If you enjoyed the content, as always, please make sure to subscribe, like, comment, all that good stuff, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.